I'm all right. How are you guys? Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. New Year. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's great. Sounds like y'all had a good Christmas. Awesome. Oh. I thought you were talking about last my dad used to use. Yeah. No, that's what I thought. It's a, it's a game. It's a game. Oh, a game.
beautiful song. And uh, my thanks to DJ Dizzy Dale <laughs> for spinning the wax this morning. <laughs> Kathy is sick, so we're using CDs. We used CDs last night. I don't know if y'all figured that out, those of you who were. for today <laughs> but thank you Dale for for uh, keeping the tunes rolling it would be a little easier today won't it last night it was no, I got a today, but... <laughs> okay <laughs> well the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you yes. uh, amen it's so good to see you all here in worship this morning. I'm honestly surprised we have this many folks in worship. It's Christmas Day, you know that. And uh, I'm just thrilled to see you all here this morning and to worship. Uh, you are blessing us by your presence. And those who are watching on Facebook Live, I want to say welcome to you as well. And Merry Christmas to you all. Um, I don't have any announcements other than what's on the back of the bulletin. Does anyone have any announcements? Dale, go ahead. I just want to say one thing about All right. I want to thank Dale again and Mary and Ron for all they do and uh, so many others who help in worship, Ron and Kathy and Tony serving as our liturgist today. So let us open our hearts and our minds as we enter into worship. I invite you to watch the video. As we gather together, let's share the gathering prayer in unison. The celebration of Christmas has just begun. Even though many of us have gone through the gift giving and receiving, have feasted with family and friends, there is yet another gift which has been given. Once in darkness. Now we have God's light, Jesus, to shine on us. The words and promises of God are all true.
us. Praise be to God. Amen. And we're going to sing all the verses. <laughs> Song came up. I thought, what song is this? <laughs> we have from our staff for the uh, staff Christmas offering and, and all the gifts we have received. You are such a blessing and we are so grateful. Our scripture reading this morning is from Hebrews. And I thought I had it pulled up. Well, the words are on the screen. So. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by words. He is the reflection of God's glory. As he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. 
having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited. Did God ever say, You are my son? He will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, those winds and his servants, flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And the wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth and the heavens are the work. Like clothing, like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of this portion of God's holy word. This is the good news. In spite of me, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Amen. From everlasting to everlasting. From everlasting to everlasting. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The part of our text this morning where the author of this letter writes, he is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint. The word. And then in verse 8, the author writes, but of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Everlasting to ever. B. And modern biblical scholarship considers the author unknown. Some have attributed the authorship to the Apostle Paul. Others have suggested perhaps it was the married missionary couple, Priscilla and Aquila. And yet the authorship is So while the authorship is unclear, unknown, who wrote it? It doesn't really matter. What is crystal clear about this epistle is the emphasis on the divine nature of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, the reflection of God's very being. That theme runs throughout this letter. The one who was, who is, and who is to come. Some have begun to doubt whether Jesus could really be the Messiah for whom they have been waiting. They believe And destroy the enemies of God's people. They believed the Messiah would come riding into Jerusalem on a war horse. Not on a donkey. But Jesus came as a helpless infant. His parents were of no social significance. And those who gathered around in that material. No dignitaries, no heads of state, no power brokers, no military guards. Jesus entered the world with simple means and a most humble beginning. 
he taught throughout his life. Us, to bless those who persecute us. And we know that Jesus he was humiliated, he was tortured and killed. His followers witnessed this and experienced persecution themselves. The people were discouraged, they were divided, they were looking for answers. The author of Hebrews writes to encourage the followers of Jesus to remain faithful in spite of the persecution, in spite of the doubts, in spite of the challenges to their faith. He encourages them, or she encourages them, to hold fast to our confession. In this letter, which is more like really a long sermon, great high priest as the perfect, the final and effective sacrifice for the sins separating human beings from God as my Wesley study Bible says. It is written or preached to encourage the believers to hold on to God's promises to hold on to Jesus. fears, but the author or the preacher wrote to encourage the believers to live in a way that would show God honor and gratitude for God's faithfulness to them. It was about loyalty to the congregation, edifying service to their sisters. Faith that is anchored in the promises of God. And as we look throughout the scripture, there are promises that God makes throughout the scriptures. Brennan Manning wrote about the promise of Christmas and the hope, peace, love, and joy we can experience when we remember the Christmas promise. in history and comes daily in mystery will come again in glory. God is saying in Jesus that in the end everything will be all right. Nothing can harm you permanently. No suffering is irrevocable. No loss is lasting. No defeat is more than transitory. No disappointment is conclusive. Jesus did not deny the reality of suffering, discouragement, disappointment, frustration, and death. He simply stated that the kingdom of God would conquer all these horrors. That the Father's love is so prodigal that no evil could possibly resist it. I love that, prodigal love. The prodigal love of God. A love that just won't give up. That's the love I have experienced in my life. I'm a God who is faithful. A God who promises to never leave us. Through and, and honestly, Christmas is a difficult time for many, many people. People who are going through the recent loss of a dear loved one, folks who are struggling just to make ends meet. And I've seen all over the news the stories of homeless folks all around this state, in this community, and in Little Rock, and all around who, who are out in freezing temperatures. The struggle is real. But you see, the promise we have on on this beautiful Christmas morning, a warmer Christmas morning than it has been in the last few days, thank God, is the promise of Jesus, the reflection of God's glory, 
and the exact impact everlasting to everlasting. It's really simple, isn't it? We try to complicate it, but it's really all about coming together as God's people and remembering that Christ is still with us, that Jesus really is the reason we are here today. It is the reason May Christ be born anew in our hearts and in our lives. And may we experience the peace, hope, love, and joy of Jesus Christ on this day and on all of our days. Amen? Amen. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. I invite you to stand now as you are able and join with me as we affirm our faith. The words of the Apostles' Creed are on the screen. Join with me now. I believe in God. be seated. As we continue in worship this morning, we come to this time of prayer, and I know there are many who are near and dear to your heart this morning, and then we will go to the Lord together in prayer. Got a note uh, requesting prayer for Ann McDaniel, so we will remember Ann prayer she is uh, one of your employees right so please lift her up in your prayers remember Kathy and Brian as well Teresa Tree okay Trace okay got it thank you other prayer concerns Bill? Yeah, Brother Brad, uh, I, I can't give you names, but we've had at least three families burned out mm -hmm. this Christmas. And we just hope that we keep those or we're uh, it's going to be a new Yeah. That's it for Brian. Okay. Thank you. Toiletries and clothing and any, any kind of needs that these families may have. And so. Thank you and Ida and all the volunteers at the shop who, who provide relief um, and grace in those moments. Ask you to continue lifting up Ken and Ellie. Ken has been under the weather for quite some time, so Ken Brown. Other prayer concerns?
We have come here today to celebrate and remember the greatest gift, Jesus, and his coming to earth as our Lord and Savior. We ask God that you would clear our minds so we can continue to May the same thrill and anticipation that filled Mary, the chosen mother of Jesus, consume us and draw us close to you. May our spirits cry out, Alleluia, with the host of angels who first delivered the good news of great joy to humble, awestruck shepherds that night so long ago. The news that would literally one day be heard around the world Help us remember and reflect on the awesome prophecies for telling your birth since the beginning of time. Give us eyes of faith to see on this side of the cross what prophets chose to believe through promises and visions. Emmanuel, God with us, Prince of Peace, the Son of God, Messiah, May all that you are saturate our senses and fill our hearts with both gratitude and worship as we bow this day before you and as we have offered our prayers to you. We pray, God, that you would be with each one we have lifted up this morning. Prayers of your people. And as we prepare to come to the table in just a few moments, receive our confession that we have not loved you with our whole heart. Forgive us for failing to love you and our neighbors as we love ourselves. Empty us of sin and anything that could inhibit our understanding or block the beautiful celebration of your birth. We surrender all that we may receive your all this Christmas day. We thank you. Whether it's one of us or an entire family, we want to prepare our hearts for you, even as you are preparing a place for us to join you one day. May every thought, every desire, every word, and every gift-giving action on this special day usher us into that place where you will meet us to you and bring you glory and honor. Just as the three magi brought their offerings in celebration of your birth, we bring you gifts too. Joyful overflow of worship and adoration. May this day be a holy day when we once again receive and celebrate your great gift to us. We pray in the name of our loving brother and Savior. Even Jesus. Our invitation, confession, and pardon. It's number 12 on page 12 in your hymnals. The words are also on the screen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, obedient church, we have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Would the ushers please come forward? Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for your presence with us today. Thank you that you would use these gifts to bless others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Thirteen in your hymnals and join me in the great thanksgiving. The word should be on the screen as well. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn holy 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 Lord God of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory Hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant.
as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ lived with me. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us... victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen and now with the confidence of the children of God let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who are trespassed against us. And we give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If those who are assisting with communion this morning would please. be a member of this church or United Methodist Church or any church to join us at the table. If you feel Christ inviting you to the table, we'll invite you to come as well. We have individual cups here. Uh, if you prefer to receive uh, with a piece of bread an individual cup, you're welcome to do that or you may receive by intention. Uh, I will place a piece of bread in your hand and then you dip the bread into the chalice and what else do we need to say? Oh, we've got prepackaged elements as well. As much time as you would like at the prayer rail, and I invite you to come forward as you are led from the rear of the sanctuary.
Has everyone been served who would like to be served? Lord, a reminder that Christ is with us even now. Mystery that we have all shared together, coming to the table as brothers and sisters in Christ, united in Christ. And we Your son Jesus, and it's in his name. Way to the world, we'll be singing verses one, two, and four. I invite you to stand as you are able and join with me. The words are on page 246 in our hymnals and also on the screen. In this time, as we sing this close. that we are to go into the world as disciples, sharing the love and the light of Christ with everyone we meet. Let us lift our voices together and sing.
We still have 12 days of Christmas. Y'all are aware of that, right? So the celebration goes on. And so may our lives be a witness to the joy, the hope, and the peace, and the love that God has given us. Amen.